بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما برهبة في الله then the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al Wasabi rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya he we last left where he was advising about the importance of the Adam al Inkita the refraining from cutting off or uh, leaving off uh, Talib al Ilm, meaning taking a big break from your studies especially when you're in the beginning of your studies or during the course of your study time and we gave many examples real world examples from other scholars in our experience of the importance of being uh, having mumarisa having uh, being continual and continuous in your studies and again this is a very important in the beginning of your seeking knowledge and throughout the the main journey of seeking knowledge as you uh, get to a stage where you're really teaching and so on and so forth then obviously you won't be you'll be focusing on a different part of your journey and seeking knowledge you'll be making maraja you'll be making revision and you'll be busy with teaching and maybe doing research which is different than when you're at the stage of really focusing on memorizing and uh, and uh, reading and, 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 and other things for during the course of your studies. So the Imam, he then said, likewise I advise you to specialize after you get what you need from other religious sciences. And specializing is the norm as it came in Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the Hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala who said, the people used to ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about good and I used to ask him about evil out of fear that it would reach me. And he mentioned the rest of the Hadith and the Prophet Sallallahu agreed with him in this. So we strive to increase in knowledge every day. It was related in Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the Hadith of Abdullah bin Umar Radiallahu who said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no jealousy except regarding two, a man who Allah has given wealth and he spends it during the day and the night. And a man who Allah has given him this book, meaning the Quran, and he implements it during the day and the night. So, Ahabit Billah, this shows us, uh, the Shaykh is, is mentioning, he gives a couple of examples about the need to specialize in seeking knowledge. And if you uh, study with the scholars and you analyze the works of uh, a lot of the scholars, you'll see, and especially in, in contemporary times, you'll really have this, have more of an opportunity to get a good image of, or a good picture of different sciences that certain ulama specialize in. Some, for example, some ulama are very strong in hadith, and that is their background in hadith sciences, about the tashheev, with the of hadith, looking whether hadith is authentic or not, and the science of ilm rijal, you know, the science of, of, of the uh, criticizing and, and, and uh, looking at the, narr the narrators of hadith or some scholars their emphasis is in uh, tafsir of the Quran for example or the kiraat of the Quran and things and sciences related to the Quran while others their general uh, specialization may be in aqidah in general in creed and creedal issues Whereas you might have another group that uh, they're very strong in the in the language, or in fiqh in jurisprudence, and so in the various sciences uh, that are entailed in uh, jurisprudence, whether it be a sul of fiqh, qawaid fiqhia, uh, you know, or just uh, general fiqh, and so you'll find that the scholars they have different levels with regards to the sciences. And then some Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored some above others. Some Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored to be very well versed in many sciences. And this is why, for example, the praise, uh, so so much praise is given to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah because he, you know, was considered Shaykh al-Islam. That there wasn't a science 
that he couldn't write and talk about with strong authority to where you thought that that was his specialty and that was the only science he he must know because he is so uh, immersed in knowledge and so steeped in knowledge and so this is uh, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives certain uh, scholars and certain people those uh, characteristics and those abilities and those and that aptitude and so likewise you'll find uh, amongst the contemporary scholars you'll find that some specialize in certain sciences and they may be weaker in other sciences and some have a general balance in many sciences and they're well versed so this is uh, fr the fadl from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he used as uh, evidence the hadith of uh, Hudayfa bin Yaman radiallahu ta'ala who said the people used to ask the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about good and I used to ask about evil out of fear that it would reach me so he used this hadith as uh, to illustrate the uh, importance that even the sahaba you know that they had different levels of knowledge and some specialized and asked about certain issues where others may not have specialized and asked about certain issues and Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala was known for knowing about the hypocrites and knowing certain secrets that he didn't uh, tell other sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and and so this uh, this is one of the evidences the sheikh uses he uses this and makes istinbat from this hadith to show that uh, that there are different uh, specializations and knowledge that people uh, to follow it you know they have different levels of knowledge and different levels of specialization and then he mentions he says likewise Allah the most magnificent says in his most his magnificent book to his Prophet وسلم, and say, My Lord, increase me in knowledge. So, this is an important dua, supplication of the Prophet وسلم, that he was ordered وسلم, with, and likewise, we are ordered uh, to follow his sunnah and to benefit from these prophetic supplications to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for al manafia and to increase our knowledge. He then mentions, he says, strive to benefit from knowledge and Allah the glorified, the Almighty said, the example of those who were charged with the Torah, then they were, did not observe it, is like the example of the donkey who carries books. And then he said, the Prophet ﷺ used to seek refuge in Allah from unbeneficial knowledge, knowledge that has no benefit. For example, uh, some of the knowledge which has no benefit for example you learning about gambling or you learning about shirk or kufr or various new ways of zina and uh you know getting involved in things that have no benefit that that would be under the banner of uh knowledge that has no and the prophet ﷺ used to seek refuge from knowledge which has no benefit so it's very important that you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for al manafia for beneficial knowledge that Allah increases you and that you strive to gain beneficial knowledge and not those things which are going to distract you and those people those things which are going to destroy you and destroy your character and destroy you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by gaining knowledge of things that have has no benefit and things that actually yodur, the things that actually have harm so it's imperative that the the believer is uh, in general is trying to seek beneficial knowledge, but especially the Talib al more specifically. And then he said, and this is a very important piece of advice, he said, and I advise you, so the next piece of advice, he said, I advise you with being humble before Allah and leaving off arrogance. This is absolutely imperative, ahabitabillah, because uh, the arrogant one, the arrogant heart, the closed heart, uh, is unable to really gain the benefit of beneficial knowledge because as we mentioned prior to this that the Salaf used to say 
al amal thamarat al ilm that deeds are the fruits uh, uh, of knowledge. So, ilm uh, nafi, a beneficial knowledge, should have uh, a beneficial uh, effect upon your character and your conduct and your practice, your deeds. So you should be coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your knowledge and not going further away from Him to Barak wa ta'ala. Wallahu musta'an. So he says, advise, uh, I advise you with being humble before Allah and leaving off arrogance. So arrogance can also prohibit you from uh, taking knowledge because maybe you're too arrogant. You're like, uh, you know, I, I don't want to sit with him or sit with Sheikh so-and-so. You know, he's not strong enough or he is like this or he's like that, you know, and, and, and from a point of arrogance. And so this is a very dangerous thing. And I recall even once... A, uh, a, a scenario where a brother was trying to invite people to khair, to goodness. And he sent out an email to people about uh, a, a series of durus or something that he was going to do or lectures. And one of the responses he received was, I only take from the kibar. That the person uh, mentioned to them, they only take from the kibar, from the major ones. And this is, this is fine if a person has only a certain uh, uh, group of, or level of scholars or what have you that they take from. But it seems strange that someone would say this because this was in the English speaking world that someone would say that they only take from the major, the major ones. Meaning I don't know major students of knowledge in their language or or what? Because the major scholars are generally not to be found in the English-speaking world. Uh, so, uh, but the point was, is how this person articulated that, their refusal of knowledge. It's fine. You don't have to sit with someone if they're inviting you or just letting you know about some information or some lectures or something. But it's how you interact with them and how you respond. Do you respond with humility? Or do you respond, you know, and as a human being, or do you respond with arrogance and kind of pride, like I'm, I'm above that, you know, that that's beneath me. So it's very, uh, you know, that's something that can be very uh, detrimental to the Talib al-Ilm and be a prohibitor to them, an obstacle uh, to them uh, seeking knowledge. So we have to be very careful of our conduct because the Talib al-Ilm, as we said, al amal thamarat al-Ilm, that you know. That the fruits of, of seeking that knowledge should be that you, you have better conduct, not that you become more arrogant and you become more sinful and you become more wicked and you become worse in behavior. So this shows, that's an illustration that someone really did gain benefit. Because uh, another point I want to mention along with this is that a beneficial knowledge isn't just that you memorize. And Sheikh Pozan, he mentions this when he was asked about, uh, I think it's in his, he did a lecture about tekfir. And he mentioned about that, he said, there's many people, he talked about different people, their different levels of knowledge. And he said that, you know, there are those who memorized a lot, but their memorization has a benefit. They're, they're not blessed with thick. They're not blessed with understanding of the religion. Uh, and with that being the case, so they're, they are very harsh and they're, and they're very arrogant and maybe they're just extreme tekfiris. There's plenty, there's plenty of Sufis that have memorized a lot. But is that knowledge really benefiting them if they're were if they are doing all kinds of bid'ah and khurafat? And some of them even go into the extent of grave worshiping. Yes, don't think that all those grave worshippers, especially from their their scholars amongst them, are totally ignorant. They have some of them are very well versed and knowledgeable in certain sciences. But is that knowledge really benefiting them? Just the fact that they're excellent in the language, or they're excellent maybe in hadith, perhaps, or they're excellent in some other science, but their aqidah is uh, deficient, and they have inhiraf. And I, uh, this reminds me of one of the major Sufis uh, in this time who people defend, and... Uh, I even have one of his his books, and if you read the back, if it's true, all the things they say on his on the sleeve of the book about what he his studies. 
This is about uh, Abdullah Al Harari al uh, from Jamaat Al Ahbash, the the founder of Jamaat Al Ahbash. He studied many Sufi uh, tariqa or turuk, uh, different Sufi uh, madhabs, if you will, or, or paths, and had bayah to different, uh, perhaps uh, you know, different uh, imams of those uh, uh, turuk, and. If you see what it's alleged that he memorized, I mean, the books of Hadith with their uh, Senate and, and things like this, but what did that really benefit him if he fought Ahlus Sunnah with his words in his bid'ah? And not only that, his bid'ah amumid anyway in Aqidah. You know, you know this uh, Ashari, Maturidiya, and then with the, the extreme Tasawwuf and, and things like this, how, how does that benefit you? So you can be, it shows us that throughout history, there's been those who have had uh, in Hiraf, you know, sometimes great deviance in their Akita, but they memorized or they were very strong in other sciences, very strong, maybe in the Arabic language that you, you couldn't find stronger than them. Or even in Usul of Fiqh, you know, in various, uh, the sciences, they were very strong, very strong. But their Aqidah was uh, deviated. So this is very important uh, to be aware of that and, and be and, and try to benefit from uh, beneficial knowledge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm anafia and, and practice. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Ilm anafia rizqan tayyibu amal al-muntaqabbinan. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah the Most Glorified and Almighty says, I will turn away from my communications those who are unjustly proud in the earth and if they see every sign they will not believe in it and if they see the way of rectitude then do not take it for a way and if they see the way of error they take it for a way this is because they have rejected our communications and were heedless of them or rejected our commandments and were heedless of them so this shows us that this is a a trait of the disbelievers to reject the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course and his commandments and his signs and that arrogance is a part of that a lot there's a lot who reject it out of arrogance they're puffed up with pride they refuse to leave the ways of their forefathers out of pride and arrogance and this is a very dangerous trait and likewise you find this uh, for people some people who uh, claim or even who seek knowledge that they may uh, the pride and the arrogance uh, will be something that uh, impairs their acquiring knowledge and impairs the thamara, the, the benefit of their knowledge then he said it was reported that Mujahid Rahimullah Ta'ala said knowledge is not attained by shyness nor being arrogant so here it doesn't mean shyness of uh, you know negating shyness as a righteous character but meaning that if you're so shy that you you can't even ask the scholars or you're so shy that you you know sh this is in a negative or a medmum way a way of not going out of your shell at all you know i don't know what we would describe that in english but that the person who is just so introverted that they cannot uh you know really you know benefit from the knowledge and likewise the other trade and this is what the sheikh is making the the shahid from this uh narration of the salaf is that uh showing that arrogance also impairs uh, a person's accepting knowledge so mujahid rahimahullah ta'ala one of the tabi'in he said knowledge and one of the mufassirin uh he said knowledge is not attained by shyness or being arrogant so you, you won't gain shyness, you won't gain uh, knowledge by being arrogant. The next point the Sheikh mentioned as a piece of advice, he said, thanking the scholars that you benefited from and supplicating for them, seeking mercy for them. SubhanAllah. So this shows us, uh, Sheikh uh, Imam al-Wasabi, Wasabi, Rahmatullahi alayhi, Rahmatul Wasiyah, that he was concerned about the Eden, the Tarbiyah, you know the education the educative effect in his lessons and that the scholar should be raising his students and the students need to get tarbiyah 
So the, the, his last piece of advice had to do with being away from arrogance. And this piece of advice had to show that you, showing that the student of knowledge should be thankful and grateful to, their, 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 uh, to the scholars they benefited from. You know, that it doesn't harm, that if, if you're not at least thanking your, your, your sheikh or, or your teacher or what have you, at least make dua for them, supplicate for them. Supplicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them. Supplicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them guidance. Supplicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrects them in their mistakes and protects them from harm. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy upon them if they have passed on. And this is something I advise to do, especially for those imams of the sunnah throughout time. You know, ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy and blesses them with jannah. For those we still, we can't do without the sacrifices that they made that we benefit from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy and bless them with Jannah to I mean, we teach their books and we teach from ulama who explain their books. So it's just, you know, they, they just gain benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this goes back to the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, in which he said, That when a person dies, his deeds cease except three. Then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, uh, so in this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet والسلام, said that when a person dies, his deeds cease except three. And the first thing the Prophet والسلام, said, uh, Continuous charity. So if a person gives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they build a masjid, they build a well that people benefit from and drink after they die, they give a building for the students of knowledge, the people are, ben are travelers or what have you, and the people benefit from it even after this person is deceased or whatever the case may be, they're getting adjur in their, their grave. They're still gaining benefit. You know, or they have money they've left aside or whatever and for beneficial projects. Hadha ni'ma bin ni'amillah. And the second one is a person who leaves knowledge behind and people and the people benefit from. So this person, this sheikh, this student, whatever has deceased and people are still going back to his or her text and still going back to his or her explanations and collections of hadith. Think about Imam Bukhari and Muslim and Tirmidhi, wa, wa, Abu Dawood, wa, wa min al-muhaddithin. And, and those before them, the, the, the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'een and, and, uh, and all throughout the, the, the history of Islam, what they left for us, the treasures of the Salaf that we still mention their names 1400 years later for some, you know, for the distance of the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'een and, you know, we still uh, benefit from them, from their narrations, from what they uh, narrated about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So they gain benefit from that. Al-alm yuntafa'abi, the knowledge that the people benefit from. This shows us also the importance of seeking knowledge. And also the importance of spreading knowledge. And then the last part, he said, وَوَلَدْ إِنْ صَالِهُمْ يَدْعُلُهُ And that you have a righteous child that supplicates for you after you die. So this is very important, you know, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with all three. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So that way, you know, that's just a great na'ma min ni'amillah. We need the benefit. We need the forgiveness. So he said, uh, thanking the scholars that you benefit from and supplicating for them, seeking mercy for them. So this is very important to do this and have, uh, you know, have that respect. And all of that is a part of tarbiyah. It's all a part of tarbiyah. And I, I really want to emphasize that because we see that uh, you find that when you travel and you see that you see that the, there's a lot of people you, you may not see this as much in fact even with even with the, the scholars you find students of knowledge sometimes even students of knowledge that have uh, big status and stuff I can recall in lessons a particular student and he you know from the west and mashallah, you know, he, he's, he's got some strength, you know, and also his background, you know, he's uh, from one of the Arab speaking countries. So, you know, he knows the language and stuff. And, you know, he knows a lot of Mashaikh. I know him from Medina. May Allah forgive us in him. 
and guide us in him. But I recall in a, a, a dars, this particular individual in, uh, in one of the localities, and he, you know, in the middle of the the sheikh's dars, you know, he, you know, sheikh, da 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 da, interrupted the sheikh, and the sheikh was, took it cool, calm, and collected. Ah, uh, yes, you know, da 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 da, that's a good, you know, da 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 da, and dealt with the issue. You know, it was very beautiful. And it wasn't even anything of controversy, but this person was interjected. And I, and I hadn't really seen that. I really haven't seen that in, in my studies in Yemen or even in uh, with other Mashiach in Medina and other places. I never really saw, I haven't witnessed personally, the people, you know, most of the people, even if they differ with the Sheikh or whatever the case may be, you know, there was always Edim. I've mainly witnessed that, you know, students of knowledge from wherever they are, I've seen a lot of excellent uh, manners, you know, that they're humble, and especially when they're dealing with those major scholars, but even lesser scholars. I don't see that Sua Adab generally. I haven't witnessed it. I just haven't. Other people have seen all kinds of stuff, but I haven't seen it so much. But, you know, occasionally you will see that. You'll see someone who just interrupts, and they, and they know they're in a gathering of Adam, and that's not something normal, but it, it's it's a very strange thing that uh, to kind of see something like that. And so it's very important to be respectful and unfortunately, we're losing that respect. Again, like I said, we see it sometimes among students of knowledge, but we see it uh, especially in, in secular knowledge that people, you see that in many of the countries, the people are losing the respect for their teachers and, and so on and so forth. Total disrespect, chaos, and sometimes evil conduct. Evil conduct, because they don't, they don't have any edit. They're losing their manners. So manners is imperative for us on the path of knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have beneficial manners. And and we know this, that that's a, a weighs heavy on the scale of the, 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 the believer, is having good adab, you know, good manners. And that should be a part of your talib al-ilm, is exercising your conduct. Because the Prophet sallallahu said, مَا مِنْ شَيْنْ أَتْخُلِ فِي مَيْزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُوَا فَيَشَ الْبَذِينَ There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners, and very Allah hates wicked and sinful uh, speech. Uh, the Sheikh then mentioned about the importance of thanking the scholars and benefiting from, that you benefited from and supplicating for them and seeking mercy for them. He said, Abu Dawood related in his sunan on Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one who does not thank the people does not thank Allah. So that's very important for us, Ahabit to to be uh, grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and grateful to the ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in our lives. That, is, that have been a form of light and guidance for us, at least seek forgiveness for them and mercy, and don't have wicked conduct with them. And, and, and so I want to mention a last point, and this goes in general. In general, you should try your best to refrain from having that wicked su adam. I'll just give you an example myself that I don't like to, uh, you know, because now we live in a cyber world. And you'll see on the internet the evil that people, you know, because everyone can sit behind their computer and just write and say anything. But you see just wicked conduct. And people, ch not keyboard warriors, but you call them uh, the people who chase up uh, uh, people and attack them uh, on their uh, social media accounts and follow them up and stuff like that. So they do that just out of spite and hatred and evil. And you have lots of Muslims who do this. So this is this is something this shows wicked conduct. If you don't if you don't take from someone and you disagree with someone, khalas, that's it. Why would you spend your valuable time in this dunya chasing them up and following them? People I disagree with, people who I think are mubtadia, I never go to them. I never go to their channels, I never go to their social media pages to follow up and spy on them and to get new collect information on them. No. But if I was doing a piece of research and I needed evidence, that might be something different, you know, in the context of research or what have you. But, you know, with with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to uh, something related to the religion, but in, but to go and spy and make comments and, and, uh, and go back and forth with people, that is not really befitting of a student of knowledge. And on top of that, there's no benefit. There's no benefit. It's a waste of your time. And in fact, you may be getting sin. So beware, be aware and beware of those kind of uh, those kind of manners. And unfortunately, we see so much of it. Look how many students of knowledge that are supposed to be students of knowledge and big students of knowledge who are involving the people in all this stuff. You know, they they spend time. There are certain brothers. You know, they they 
people are attacking they've been attacking them for years so many lectures dedicated i can't imagine giving a lecture dedicated to about uh, about an individual generally you know it would have to be for a real sharia maslaha but generally to spend time and do lectures across the world khutbas that we've heard about uh jumwas you know where they making a khutbah about so and so and so and so in a far off land just to belittle and destroy them subhanallah the people are coming together for jumwa coming together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, coming together to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, coming together to benefit, and you're leaving an ether, an effect in their hearts about someone else around the world, which has, I don't, I don't know what the Sharia-based objective is for doing that during the khutbah and spending that kind of effort researching people's social media sites, their Facebook, and they posted this, and this shows that they're this, and, and this is what they mean by this, and going through all those kind of things. It's a very dangerous adab, and definitely not befitting for the Talib al Ilm. And we ask Allah al Kareem, Rabbil Arsh al Azim, and Yatawallana wa Iyakum, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad.